whatever you value, you won't regret building the business a little bit slower when you lived incongruent with your values. So let's dive into today and really understand what does it look like to build a culture of calm, of serenity, of intentionality, of just mindfulness. Welcome to the Schools of Excellence podcast, a place for insightful conversations about building sustainable schools of excellence. Join me each week as we explore the importance of leading with your values, creating impact and leaving a lasting legacy. My goal on the show is to provide you with clarity, elevate your mindset and equip you with practical strategies and inspiration. I'm Wolchansky, a proud mother of four, a former New Yorker, now savoring sunny Florida vibes. With a professional journey spanning 18 years across all levels of school leadership, I bring nuanced insight that delve into the intricate details of running a center, as well as the broader visionary aspects of leadership. Thank you for joining me for this conversation. Let's build a legacy of excellence together. Hello there, and welcome back to another episode. So last week, I introduced you to the concept of a culture of urgency. We really dove into some of the symptoms and impacts that a culture of urgency has inside of an organization, specifically a school. And so today we're going to talk about the opposite of a culture of urgency, which is a culture of calm, culture of serenity and peace and intentionality. And what happens a lot when people hear these words is there's almost this like magnetic, like opposite magnetic pull where it's like, oh, I don't want to go there um, because it feels really different in a world that is really prioritizes fast pace and demanding nature of modern life. It feels really difficult to embrace a culture of slowness or more mindfulness. And the other reason why it's so difficult to embrace more slowness is because we have these big ambitions and goals. And if you're listening to the Schools of Excellence podcast, you do have big ambitions and goals for your company. And so when you think of doing things slowly, you're like, one second, but I have all these big dreams and I have all these big goals. Um, I also think there's just a lot of of this conversation that really seeps into our culture. Like we have, you know, 30 under 30 or all these like, you know, Forbes, uh, the top 40 under 40 list of all these people that made a bajillion dollars by the time they were 30 or 40. And so there's such a prioritization in our culture of like making it big or being successful before a certain age. And it's like, whoa, now you're like amazing because you were able to do this before you were 30 or before you were 40. And I, I think, again, it's not that there's anything wrong with becoming, you know, insanely successful before you're 30 or however you define success. Um, it's more about is that aligned with the values and in how you want to live in har harmony with your life and in your center. So people that are listening to this podcast, people that are, you know, running legacy based businesses, um, ch legacy based child cares, where there's this intentionality on building community, on building legacy, on leading through values. Um, we live incongruently when that's what we want, but then we pursue this like fast paced, like doggy dog mindset. And so I really hope that with these two conversations last week and today, we can really kind of bring balance to both of those. And balance is really the wrong word. I think but just more harmony, more integration, that you can have big ambitions and you can have big goals and you can have big dreams, but it doesn't mean that you have to go and be relentlessly pushing the boulder up the mountain and never stop and never pause and never pa like pause to take a moment. Um, I think especially for those of you that are listening to this episode that are in a season of raising a family, like you will never have regrets for building your business a little bit slower and prioritizing family and really prioritizing what it means to be present emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually present uh, with your children. You th That window of time is short. And when it closes, it never opens again. I really need you to understand this for whoever is in a season right now who is raising a family. You That season has a window. It has a beginning time. It has an end time. And when it closes, it closes. It never opens up again. But your season to build your business is infinite. You can run your business till you're 80. You can't have kids when you're 80, right? You're supposed to be enjoying your grandchildren and great-grandchildren when you're 80. So we, we have to understand, again, and I, I, talk, I talk about this obsessively of seasons of life, you won't regret going a little bit slower, but prioritizing your values. So if your values in this season are family, then prioritize that, then value that. And by valuing, it means you're giving time to that. 
Okay. If you're in a season right now where you're caring for an elderly parent, go slower in your business. Give the parent the time that they need, that you want to give them. Okay. And whatever season of life that you're in, it doesn't, I know I talk a lot about family because family is a huge part of my life right now. That's my season. It's also just a, a huge value in my life, but whatever you value, you won't regret building the business a little bit slower when you lived incongruent with your values. Um, so let's dive into today and really understand what does it look like to build a culture of calm, of serenity, of intentionality, of just mindfulness. So the first thing is, is really prioritizing the environment and the well-being of the team. So it's really slowing down enough to say, okay, does our physical space nourish um, and create relaxation, time to pause, time to breathe, time to just be. So we spend hours and hours inside of the center. So many teachers have eight, 10 hour shifts. Um, and even if they have a smaller shift, it doesn't matter. It's not about how many hours they are in school. It's the fact that they are in the building for several hours every single day and it makes up a big part of their life. And so does the building in the way that the environment is set up, does it value and prioritize slowing down and well-being, right? Is there a staff lounge? Is there a place for people to sit down and get comfortable, whether that's a couch or chairs or, you know, is there, you know, an outdoor area, a little park bench? Like, where is there space for teachers to just pause? For you as the leader to just pause and just be within the school day? I think there is such a disservice that we do to ourselves and thinking that when we come to work, we're running the entire time that we're here and we can never slow down for a moment. I was talking with um, an owner several weeks ago and she was talking about how she never really stops to even have a lunch break. So she eats lunch, um, but she eats it at her desk, right? She's still working while she's eating lunch. And it was interesting because there was a couple people on that call and one person was saying, she's like, no, I like it. I like, you know, eating lunch and talking to everyone while I'm eating. And I said, okay, well, that's you. Um, but this director um, really wants peace and values quiet. And she's eating lunch at her desk while being interrupted by everyone. That's not prioritizing well-being. And let me tell you something. Eating lunch for 30 minutes alone and quietly and getting that time for yourself, you are not going to make any more money that year if you eat lunch quietly. You are not going to be any more successful if you eat lunch with everyone else. You are not going to build, be any more amazing if you eat lunch while you're taking sales calls or, you know, eating lunch while you're doing a tour or whatever it is, or scarfing your sandwich down four seconds before the tour comes. You, like, this is we are really surrendering and understanding that, like, prioritizing well-being is a vehicle for success. It is the pathway to making more money and more profit and more peace in your life. You don't become more wealthy when you don't eat lunch. Like that, that's not a correlation. Okay, where else do we want to bring in more intentionality and how do we bring that in? Like I was saying, intentional decision-making. So in a culture of urgency, there's reactive decision-making. In a culture of calmness, there's intentional dis decision-making. So instead of reacting impulsively, we really take the time to consider what are the repercussions of this decision? What are the consequences? We weigh the different options. We align the choices with our values, with our long-term goals. We take the time to think something through. Now, one of the things that we adopted inside of our culture in the membership uh, department, gosh, it's almost two years, I think, at this point, is when we write an email, uh, we don't click send for 24 hours. We actually let it sit in draft mode for 24 hours. And the reason for that is there's lots of reasons. But one of the main ones is, is that after we write the email, um, there's always other things that kind of percolate. Um, in that 24 hours. So sometimes I'll end up chatting with Michalina about something or I'll hear something or something will always happen in that window that I'll be like, okay, let's shift the language of that email a drop or, um, you know, let me actually jump on a call instead of an email. I actually would rather do that. So we write the email if we're writing to a client or whoever it is. Um, and then we let it sit in draft mode for 24 hours. Let me tell you something. Okay. Our customer service and our client delivery is still at the highest that I want it to be, right? It's still incredible. Now, is there always room for improvement? Of course, we can always make it better. But not 
but putting an email in draft mode for 24 hours and giving it time to marinate makes us better right? The urgency of like reacting right away. We've seen the impact of that. It's never served us to reply in five seconds. Um, there's something beautiful about taking time to answer. So um, I've shared that with our clients many, many times. And a lot of our leaders um, have actually adopted that principle inside of their organizations where they'll write emails and they'll keep it in draft mode for 24 hours before they reply. So where else do we want to bring a culture of calmness? Cultivating patience. Oh, this is hard. So our company just did 2022 and 2023 were uh, maintenance years. And so as the leader, I had to really learn how to cultivate patients um, with goals, with, um, you know, financial goals, with uh, different targets, with assets we wanted to build, all this kind of stuff. I really had to cultivate patients. And this past year, when I was helping our clients set goals for 2024, um, a lot of our clients actually said that they really, really wanted to um, to, like cultivate patients. They wanted to actually enter maintenance years, uh, where maintenance months, where they were prioritizing maintaining what they have built. So cultivating patients is really about recognizing that not everything needs to be done immediately. And you can allow for processes to unfold at their natural pace. And so when we adopt this cultivating of patience, um, there's so much less urgency into, oh, and we have to go do this thing and we have to go build this and we have to go make this event. And we have to go do this event. No, we don't. No, we don't. Um, when you're cultivating patience, it really allows you to just strip down to the bare bones of like, what do we must do? inside of our school like what do we really really have to do not what do we want to do or what do we feel like our competition is doing no what do we really have to do here um and then when you do those things really really well um you actually start to realize that it's okay if you don't do a million other things also <laughs> so that's cultivating patience okay how else do you bring a culture of calm but still have big ambitions okay quality over quantity, really dedicating time and attention to doing fewer activities, having fewer relationships, but ensuring that there's a deeper and more meaningful engagement in those things. So this is when you're sitting down and you're saying, okay, we're not going to do every single thing or idea that we want to do here. Um, but the ones that we do do, we're going to make them amazing. Um, you might be looking at your social circle and saying, okay, I've got a big social circle. Um, but I also have these really big ambitions and these big goals that I want to achieve. Um, but relationships are really important to me. And so that might be you having to reckon with, okay, do I need a smaller social circle where I can, you know, still value and prioritize relationships and friendships because those are important to me. And I'm going to have a smaller circle so that I'm not stretched so thin. So again, this is about choosing intentionally what you want inside of your life. It is not about not going after big goals. Okay. Lastly, how do we bring a culture of calm? Flexible planning. So instead of rigid schedules and tight deadlines and firefighting, right, we invite more slowness into planning. We allow room for spontaneity. We allow capacity for adjusting plans to the present moment. We create space for creative expression, right? We really allow for more space for there to be other things that come up. You see, because as you go and do big things, right? And go pursue your big ambitions. You are going to be met with opportunity. Opportunity is going to come knocking. And when your schedule is so like tight and rigid and has no space, you don't get to say yes to opportunities. You actually miss certain amazing things because you overcrowded your schedule with stupidity. And so this is why it is so critical as you're building and have big ambitions and goals to go slower to create more space, more flexibility and fluidity in your calendar and in your commitments. So when big opportunities come, because they will, they will come, I promise you they're coming. 
you will actually have the capacity to go after them uh, because you didn't say yes to a million non non needle moving activity inside of your business. So really inviting slowness is this deliberate choice to live with a greater awareness. It's to make decisions in your center from a place of mindfulness. It's about reclaiming, claiming control over the peace and the pace inside of your life. You get to decide how quick and how flow your school operates. You really get to decide, I'm going to find joy in the journey rather than constantly being focused on the destination. And it's very difficult to find joy in the journey because the journey is full of tons of pebbles and rocks and boulders and chaos and uncertainty and ambiguity and frustrated people. And it is very difficult to find joy in the journey. The problem is, is that if you only find joy when you get to the end, you are always going to be hustling. You are always going to feel like everything is urgent. Because everything is urgent. If you don't allow yourself to celebrate until you get to the end, you're going to run and run and run until you get to the end. But there's no end. The work is always there. Even if you worked for 14 hours straight, there'll still be more work. Right? It's not, oh my gosh, if I clean and clean and clean, you know, every single day, um, then tomorrow I don't have to clean. No, no. Tomorrow, (laughs) new people make new messes. So, or the same people make new messes or the same mess. Pausing and inviting this culture of slowness goes against our nature. And it takes so much leadership and courage to say, I want sustainable schools. I want retention. I want a thriving culture. I want to be doing this for a long time. I say this all the time. I'm playing the decades game. I want to do this till I'm 80, right? So if I'm playing the decades game and I want to do this till I'm 80, well, I better be doing it in a sustainable way and not burning myself out. That means I have to go slower. I have to go slower. And I don't want you to think that going slower means you don't have goals and you don't get to have big ambitions because you do. You do them in a different way. So I hope today's conversation really inspired you to just go a little bit slower, embrace a little bit more mindfulness, a little bit more intentionality. And if you're thinking of all this and saying, I I want this, I want to be around this. I want to be around community who's like this. I want mentorship where, you know, I could really bring this into my life. Then I would love to invite you to apply to our owners HQ and director's inner circle. The link is in the show notes. Our community is about, prioritizing excellence and really doing that in a way that is calm, sustainable, intentional, and mindful. So if this speaks to you, I would love to welcome you to the tribe. All right. Thanks so much for joining us today. If you are loving the Schools of Excellence podcast and have gotten any value out of it for your school and for yourself, I would love if you can do two things for me. One, subscribe to the show so you never miss an episode. And two, can you please leave us a review? Reviews help other school leaders know that this is the podcast to learn about building a school of excellence. And I'd be so grateful if you could do that for us. Your help and support make this show be able to listen to by thousands of other school leaders around the globe. Thanks so much for listening and giving us your time and attention each week.